Hey, what's going on guys? Mackenzie Long here talking about the book, The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz. I love this book and I want to tell you a little bit about it. So if you don't know me, again, my name is Mackenzie Long. I've been teaching people how money works for the last eight years. It's something that's not taught in schools, meaning most people are financially illiterate, which means they make lots of mistakes when it comes to money, and they're oftentimes being taken advantage of. The lack of financial literacy is a huge problem in our society, and obviously when you're solving big problems, there's lots of opportunity and lots of money to be made. And so one of the commitments that I make every year is that I wanna make sure that I'm reading good books, things that inspire me, things that help me develop, especially as I lead people and I lead clients, it's very important to make sure that I'm personally developing and making sure that I'm seeing things appropriately as well. And I love this book. I've read it a long time ago on some courses that I've taken in entrepreneurship and in finance, and it can oftentimes be a book that's recommended. And I think it's very, very helpful in a lot of different areas that we're gonna talk about today. And the reason why I chose this book was because I kind of forgot about it and it's always kind of on one of those best classics. And I've grown to some new areas in life and so I want to expand my vision again because oftentimes we can kind of get to that point we wanted to and then we're not really growing beyond that and I needed to stretch again. So I thought it was very important to be able to do that and there were some great reminders in this book. So the first thing that he talks about, Schwartz talks about in this book is believing in success and you will succeed. Succeed. And the reason why I think this is so important, and this is one of the big challenges we have going on in our society right now, is how, what do we actually teach people and how do we teach them? And what he talks about is that if you believe you can succeed, you will. The challenge or a lot of the beliefs that are kind of being taught right now is that you can't succeed because this group is against you or that group is against you or you shouldn't like this person or that person doesn't have this or this person doesn't wear a mask and so everybody's fighting against everybody and I think when you have that kind of drama or that turmoil or you have that belief system that everybody's after you or if the government was better or whatever then you would be able to succeed. And Obviously that first step before you're going to try to succeed is having that belief system that you can. And obviously thinking big. If you're not thinking big or you're not dreaming big, why would you attempt to do things that are uncomfortable? Why would you attempt to do things that stretch you? And he says that the size of your success will be to the size of your dreams. The challenge with this is most people don't have dreams or they used to when they were kids, you ask any kid what they wanna be when they grow up and they have these massive dreams. We tell them they can be president or astronaut or dentist or doctor, whatever it is they want. But some reason by the time we get to our 20s and 30s, all of that is gone. Uh, it seems like life kind of sets in. We forget that we can actually do the things that we want. We just merely have to figure out what we want and how we're gonna get it. And he said, really the first step here is being able to transform your fears and your doubts into positive thoughts. And that's not easy to do. I've tried to go, if you want to try this, a great test for yourself is try to go a whole day without thinking a negative thought. Uh, nearly impossible, but a great task to try to accomplish in being less negative is how can you stop those thoughts from happening or at least convert negative thoughts into the positive aspect of them. Number two is one of my favorites. It says drop all of your excuses. And Schwartz really dedicates this whole chapter to all the different excuses that people have and really how it turns people off. A big one that he talks about is your health. A lot of people say that they don't really feel good or they don't really feel like doing this or they can't really stay focused. They blame things a lot of times on their health and their physical well-being. And he said, if you talk to any doctor, any doctor will tell you that everybody has physical ailments, everybody has challenges, everybody has problems going on with their body, everybody doesn't feel like doing it all of the time. And the more you talk about those things, the more you share that with other people, the less they like you, the less they wanna be around you, and the more that you buy into these things and the more health problems you'll actually have. And that goes for any of your excuses. Whatever we focus on grows. So if we focus on our excuses, that's actually gonna become stronger as well. Number three, he says, don't underestimate your intelligence. And just as much as you shouldn't underestimate your intelligence, you also shouldn't overestimate somebody else's intelligence. We have a tendency to do this. We say, well, that person was kind of lucky. 
They are more intelligent than I am. They're smarter than I am. That's why they were able to accomplish these things. When in most cases, that's not true. A lot of times I look into the people that are successful in my industry. I'm like, wow, how is that even possible? It really makes me reevaluate myself and some of the things that I'm doing. Because if they can hardly even speak English and it's not like they're good at any other language either. And yet they're extremely successful. It tells you that that's not the most important thing and that uh, finding the pathway through is. In this, he also recommends how important it is to understand your attitude and why it's important to have a good attitude and why people are attracted to that. And he also references the, the power and the understanding of having emotional intelligence and that this is not cast in stone. You can develop these things. You can get better in these areas of your life. And basically what he's saying here is that you can change your brain and you can grow your life. You can grow your skills. You can get better at things and you will just by doing that. And obviously as you increase your intelligence and the less excuses you make, the better you're going to get and the more successful you're going to become. Number four or the fourth bullet point is that confidence destroys fear. And the reason why confidence destroys fear is because when you're confident in doing something and you know you can get a result, the fears start to go away. And the way that you build confidence is by taking action. Now you're going to fail in anything that you do in the beginning. If you haven't ridden a bike before and you try to ride a bike, you're going to fail. A kid who hasn't walked before, learning how to walk, they're going to fail. So understanding that, that that's part of the process and taking action, the way that we learn is by messing things up or not doing it the right way. And that's how we learn to do it the right way. And he also mentions here that to make sure you do only the things that are right. Number five, think and dream creatively. And this kind of goes back to number one a little bit, but more so what he's talking about here is once you have the belief system and you believe that you can do something, your brain will help you find ways to accomplish it. And the more you believe you can do it and the more you see yourself accomplishing it, the more your brain will pull you towards those things and it will figure out how to accomplish it if you believe that you can do it. The second part of this is, is he says, don't get caught up on traditions. And one of the biggest things that I see here, especially in this whole new era that we have going on, and I just did another video about that, you should go check it out. But with everything that's going on now, there's so much that's changed in just the last couple of years. And one of the challenges that people often have with gurus is that they're talking about something in the past or how they did it 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. And things have changed since then. Things have changed so much over just the last couple of years. So don't get caught up on what used to work or what used to not work back then in that learning that times are changing and you might need to do something different. So don't get so stuck on what it is that you're doing, especially if it's not working and to go out and look for new ways to do things. The third bullet point here is to make sure you demand of yourself that you can do better. And what will happen is you will find ways to get better. If you continually demand that of yourself and you continually ask those questions of yourself of how can I get better? What areas can I improve? What areas do I need to improve in? You will get the answers to those by asking yourself that question. And the fourth bullet point here is how important it is to talk to other people, to hear different ideas and different ways of doing things, of people who have success or successful in what you wanna do because you will have new ideas. And the challenge is if you don't have any new ideas coming in, you'll just kind of repeat that same process over and over again versus when you hear, oh, this is how that person does it, you can start to adapt and make some of the changes to what's actually working. Number six is you are who you think you are. So this has a lot to do with your perception of yourself. If you can learn to love yourself and you can learn to see yourself in a positive light and you can learn to take care of yourself and treat yourself as somebody who's important and somebody who has value and somebody who's going to continue to bring value, you will react and act very differently to yourself. Bullet point number one here is to carry yourself as if you were somebody who's important and you are and you should believe that you are because there's something important for you. I don't believe whether you have faith or not, I don't believe that there's accidents. I think that people are here to do specific things and you have a gift that only you can do. Bullet point number two is to think of your work as if it's actually important because again, it is. What you do makes a difference. What you do is important for other people. And the third bullet point here is that how would the ideal you act 
right? That person that you look up to or that person that you admire, how would they act in this particular situation? And then you act that way or you become more that way. Number seven is to go first class. And a lot of what he talks about here is really kind of your associations, the people that you're around. Who are you picking to listen to? Who are you getting advice from? Because all of that will change the direction of your life. He says you can't afford to not go first class. And what he means by that is not surrounding yourself with the right people. Why aren't you getting that course that you know you should get that would put you around those people that you need to be around that will help you learn the things that you need to learn. And he talks about this as far as traveling and doing some of those things of getting a first class seat. And he says, so important is because the, the people you surround yourself will change your lifestyle. And this is so true. So if you're living someplace around people who are small thinkers, who are not looking forward to the future or living for today, you will start to absorb those things versus you start putting yourselves in situations of people who think bigger than you and act bigger than you and make more money than you, you will stretch and you will become more like them. Number eight is think right towards people. And he goes on to illustrate here that the way you think about people on the inside, your personal inside, is how you will treat them on the outside, how you will treat them to their face. And what he means by that is obviously, when people don't do the things that we want, that's frustrating. When people see things differently than we want, that's frustrating. But what he says is it's important of, if you wanna keep that relationship, of how you view them in your head. And I think about a spouse at this point, or your kids, or a colleague. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the one thing that they messed up out of a hundred, right? That we're very good at seeing those things. So we can focus on that. And that's what we iterate in our brain over and over again. And so that's what we act out when we're around that person. So we might not say it, we never told them what we were feeling out loud, but because we said it to ourselves or we thought it multiple times, we start to treat them differently versus if we're constantly thinking about how much we love that person and the 99 good things that they do, do, regardless of that one thing that they don't do, then we will also start to treat them that way. And that's important for your clients, that's important for the people that you want in your life, your friends, your relationships, the way you talk about them and the way you think about them will bring about how you react to them. And it's those micro things that you can't see that they pick up on. Number nine, he says, think like a leader. He said, there are people following you, whether you know it or not, people are listening to what you have to say, people are watching what you're doing, and people are following your example, good, bad, or indifferent. And as people are following you, it's important to make sure you put yourself in their shoes, that you can see things from their perspective. And this will help you tremendously through your life to understand that people see things through different lenses than you do. This will help you be more understanding with people and be able to help them from their perspective to see things differently. Number 10 is get in the habit of action. He says, just start things, get it going, whether you feel like timing's right or not, whether everything's correct. So many people are waiting for the moon, the star, the sun, everything to align before they get started. The challenge is it's never a good time. It's never going to be the right time. There's always going to be things going on. So get in the habit of just getting started that when you have that idea, there's something called the law of diminishing returns. And once you make a decision, let's say to go to the gym or to eat healthy or to make more money, to get enrolled in that program, to start saving more money. The challenge is the longer you wait to start taking action on that decision, the less likely it is that you're going to make that decision. So when you have good ideas that come to you and it's something that you know you should do, start taking action on it immediately. And what happens is that starts to build into a habit and you start making good decisions and acting on, on them immediately. What's interesting with people is that we quit almost everything except for the things that we should quit, right? And so we quit all the good things, we keep all the bad things, and that ends up with the life that we end up with. He says, you don't dare because it's difficult, but it's difficult because you don't dare. And I think that's really important. We think ourselves out of good ideas all of the time. Number 11, as we wrap this up here, is to make sure that you dream big. And by dreaming big, he means set big goals. Set outlandish goals, because the worst thing that happens is you stretch to become them, 
Right, you always hear, shoot for the moon and at least you'll end up amongst the stars. He says, life is way too important to just let it pass by, that you need to make sure that you have a plan and that you're working towards it. Things will not just happen by chance. You won't accidentally fall into success. And I'm doing another video on that as well. Because you do, you have to force good things into your life. The bad things are easy. They come without asking, they come without permission, they come whether we want or not. You actually have to force all of the good things that you want in your life, whether that's your faith, whether it's your family, whether it's your finances, whether it's your fitness or your fun, you have to force those things into your life. He says, when the haters hate that you're thinking big, it's proof that you're doing something right. He says, when you get scared, think big. Focus on what it is that you want to accomplish. One of the things that our team says is it's small things to a giant, right? If you were looking at it from a bigger perspective, the person you were going to become, these things that we oftentimes see as roadblocks are really just kind of speed bumps, that they're just small steps along the way. He says, when you are angry and you feel like you might be getting into a quarrel, to think big, that it's not worth a fight. It's not worth your life over. He said, if your romantic life is in trouble, well, then you gotta think big. How can you start acting in ways to rekindle that romance? And that's true for anything in our life. Anything good in our life, you're gonna have to fight for. You're gonna have to put time and effort into it. I hope this was helpful for you. It's a great read if you get a chance to. You can also find it on YouTube if you like the audio version as well. So make sure you hit the like button and also hit the subscribe as well. And I'll see you later.